Welcome back. This is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. A couple of weeks ago, I made a video on NAC or NAC, N-acetylcysteine. It generated a lot of interest because of the antioxidant properties of it. Today, we're going to talk about quercetin, which also has a very high antioxidant activity. So let's go into some of the features of quercetin. Quercetin can be used as an antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, as well as an immune-enhancing or immune-modulating supplement, as well as an antihistamine. Okay, so what is it? It's a bioactive flavonoid found in lots of fruits and veggies. So things like apples, berries, broccoli, grapes, nuts, onions, especially the red variety, bell peppers, tomatoes, etc. Okay, there's more foods than just what I listed there. So the clinical applications are things for allergies, viruses, neurocognitive changes, as well as cardiovascular disease and diabetes. Now, in terms of allergies, you can use quercetin with things like bromelain and stinging nettle leaf uh, to enhance uh, antihistamine effects, okay? With viruses, you can use it with things like NAC or N-acetylcysteine and other supplements, supplements which I will list uh, a little later on. Also, it helps neurocognitive changes because it helps improve inflammation and also has a cardioprotective uh, effect. So in terms of cardiovascular uh, effects, it has a uh, cholesterol modulating effect, so it reduces high cholesterol. It reduces blood pressure or high blood pressure, as well as anti-inflammatory effects. So all those things combined has a decrease in cardiovascular um, uh, risk, as well as neurocognitive changes. Now, there are different forms of quercetin that you can utilize, right? I just listed a few there. Quercetin is usually very well tolerated, right? Only people who need to be cautious are usually people who have kidney disease, where their GFR is very low. So if it's well tolerated, we can use anywhere from 500 to 1,000 milligrams in divided doses, right? In two to four times per day. So you can take 500 milligram capsules two to four times per day or up to 1,000 milligrams two to four times a day. The half-life is about three and a half to seven hours. That's why you want to dose multiple times throughout the day to have the most positive effect. So when you're, when you're in allergy season, you want to use it more frequently to knock down the histamine effects. Or you can use it prophylactically very early on in terms of, let's say, getting a cold or, or the flu, right? The first signs and symptoms is when you want to really hit it hard with quercetin. Now, it also has a zinc ionophore effect. What that means is that Quercetin enhances the transport of zinc into the cell membrane. That's why it can be a very important um, nutrient in terms of fighting viruses. Okay. Now, there are other nutrients that can enhance viral replication or help you help the immune system fight off viruses. So, in terms of the first signs of, let's say, a cold or, or a viral pneumonia or any types of viruses that you might catch uh, during the winter months, right? Things like vitamin C and vitamin A is very important. Zinc, as, like I said, quercetin is a zinc ionophore. Astragalus extracts, echinacea, licorice, licorice root extracts, mataki mushrooms, lemon balm extracts, and I also like cordyceps uh, for lung function. So you can use these in combination at the first sign of catching a cold or the flu or the first signs of a runny nose or congestion. And you can ward off uh, these conditions much faster um, in the disease process or the infection process of a virus, okay? My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results, and we'll see you guys next week 
on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.